Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about the transistor small signal models. Our goals for this video are going to be to define the conditions for small signal operation in a transistor amplifier, and to develop the small signal circuit models that we know as the hybrid pi model and the T model. Over here on the left, you can see that I have pictures of the hybrid pi model and the T model for the BJT circuits. Let's start with the MOSFET. Here you can see I have the same MOSFET circuit that I developed in the previous video. I have VDD, I have the drain resistor, and I have our VGS voltages. In this case, I've taken the liberty of splitting these up into our small signal, little VGS, and our DC offset, capital V, subscript capital GS. I've also went ahead and labeled the value of the VDS voltage at the output as VDD minus IDRD. And we know from the previous video looking at our voltage transfer characteristic curve, that it is important that we pick a Q point in the saturation mode, in which case we know that the current, ID, is 1 half Kn VOV squared. I've gone ahead and expanded the value of VOV squared to show I have our DC offset VGS and our small signal little VGS. Our goal here is to look at this equation and understand the conditions upon which we will have fairly linear operation when we're looking at using a transistor as an amplifier. In order to do that, what we need to do is expand the square and look at the condition that would be necessary to have a mathematically linear equation. So let's go ahead and start with a few things. Our first observation is that capital V subscript capital GS, our DC offset value, minus VT is our overvoltage value. Therefore, we can rewrite this as ID equals 1 half Kn VOV plus little VGS squared. Expanding this square, we get VOV squared, VOV times VGS times 2, and VGS squared. Distributing the 1 half Kn, we can find that we have 1 half Kn VOV squared plus Kn VOV little VGS plus 1 half Kn little VGS squared. Now we can see that we have three distinct terms. We have the 1 half Kn VOV squared term, and we might recognize that this is all DC. So this is actually our DC current, capital I sub D. Looking at the second two terms, Kn VOV little VGS and 1 half Kn little VGS squared, we recognize that because we have the little VGSs in here, that these two terms are our small signal terms. This first term we can see is a linear term because it doesn't have a square on VGS. And our second term is a square term or a nonlinear term. And this sets up our first observation in order to understand the small signal condition. Let's recognize that these last two terms are our small signal current little id. And little id can be written as kn vov vgs plus 1 half kn vgs squared. And again, that first term is linear. And the second term is a quadratic term, which represents a potential for distortion in our signal. Therefore, what we want in our current is for this first term to dominate the second term. Mathematically, what we're saying is that we want this first term to be much, much larger than the second term. In this inequality relationship, we have a few things we can cancel. We can cancel the Kn's, and we can cancel one of the VGS's on either side. Moving the 1 half over to the left side, we can get that 2 VOV must be much, much greater than VGS. And this turns out to be our small signal condition. It is this condition that gives us hope that we will have a linear response in our amplifier. If that condition is met, we can recognize that ID will be equal to Kn VOV little VGS. The Kn VOV in this case is the slope of our linear response for this transistor amplifier. We're going to call it the transconductance value G sub m. We might recognize this. In fact, this is a part of our gain equation that we developed in the previous video. We can boil this down to be equal to 2 ID over VOV. And if this looks familiar, that also means that we can modify our voltage gain value, AVO, to be equal to minus GM times RD. With all of these ideas in mind, let's go ahead and start to develop the small signal equivalent models for the MOSFET-based transistor amplifier. Once again, over here on the left, I have drawn our circuit that we're going to look at for modeling the transistor amplifier. In this case, we recognize that VDS equals VDD minus IDRD. 
An ID here is our dependent variable. It's what we get when we have this signal VGS coming in. And as we just observed, we know that this has a DC portion and a small signal portion. And if our small signal condition is met, the response or the small signal portion of this is linear in its response. What we can also observe is that this equation tells us about our dependent source that we need to use as our model. See here, we have a voltage controlled current source. Therefore, in both our hybrid Pi and T models, our dependent source will be a voltage controlled current source. In the MOSFET circuit, let's also observe that when we look at the current coming in here, in fact, well, we don't anticipate that there be any current when we look at this transistor ideally. Because this is a capacitor, we know that there be no current. If there's no current, then there's an infinite amount of resistance in this circuit, and therefore the input resistance for the hybrid Pi model of the MOSFET is infinite, or an open circuit. With that, that gives us the basis for drawing our hybrid Pi model. Starting at the input, the gate, we have an open circuit. Then across drain to source, we have our dependent current source. And as we just showed in the previous part of this video, that current source has a gain value or a transconductance value of G sub M, and it's dependent on VGS. And over here we can draw VGS. This model is complete if we don't take into account any effects of channel length modulation in our MOSFET. However, because we do have channel length modulation in real MOSFETs, it's important to understand that what this does is it produces an output resistance while we're in the saturation mode. This output resistance is a result of the fact that we have that slope in our saturation curve, which of course results in an early voltage we call VA. Therefore, RO is equal to the absolute value of VA over our DC current ID. And that completes the hybrid Pi model of the MOSFET transistor amplifier circuit. Alternatively, we can have a model that we call the T model. It's very similar in the sense that it is a dependent current source, but its shape is a little bit different, and sometimes this model is more amenable depending on the circuit we're trying to analyze. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to draw this. In this model, you can see that we have our dependent source, and we have here a resistance that is modeled as 1 over Gm. This makes sense because a transconductance or a conductance value is simply in units of 1 over ohms, and therefore if we take 1 over that value, we do get a resistance. And here again we have our output resistance, which is modeling the fact that we have channel length modulation in the MOSFET. One of the things to observe about both of these models is the fact that our current source is pointing down. This is reflective of the fact that we have a negative gain value. But again, negative gain does not mean a smaller gain, it just means a 180 degree phase shift in the signal that we're amplifying. Now let's take a look at a very similar development for the BJT based amplifier circuit. Here again, you can see that we have our BJT circuit. We have our RC, we have our VCC, we have labeled our collector emitter voltage, and over here we have split up our small signal and our DC offset values at the base. Again, as a reminder, we have our voltage here at collector emitter as being VCC minus ICRC, and we know from our previous video that we need to pick a point of operation in forward active mode. In forward active mode, we know that the collector current is equal to I sub S E to the VBE over the thermal voltage VT. The first thing to observe is the fact that I've written VBE here as little v capital subscript BE to indicate that this is a mixed signal. Let's go ahead and expand this and recognize that when we have a sum in the top of an exponential, we can separate that into two exponentials multiplied by each other. Therefore, we can get I sub S E to the capital VBE over the thermal voltage VT times E to the little VBE over VT. We should now recognize that the first part of this term, I sub S E to the capital VBE over VT, is simply our DC collector current, IC. Therefore, we can write this as little IC equals capital IC E to the little VBE over VT. This last term, E to the VBE over VT, in this equation, is our small signal portion of the response. What we need to recognize is that an exponential is obviously nonlinear. However, 
there is a condition upon which this might be somewhat linear. In order to understand that, what we're going to do is take the expansion of this, the Taylor series expansion of an exponential, and we're going to take the first couple of terms. Expanding that, we can say that it approximately equals 1 plus little vbe over the thermal voltage vt. These first two terms will be valid when we find that the value of the thermal voltage is much, much greater than this small signal, little vbe. And that last point is what we call the small signal condition for the BJT. And if that small signal is met, we can now rewrite the collector current as being approximately equal to I sub C equals capital I sub C times one plus VBE over the thermal voltage VT. Distributing the capital IC or the DC collector current, we can get that I sub C plus I sub C over VT times little VBE equals our collector current. Looking at this approximate equivalency, we can recognize that here we have our DC current and here we have our small signal current. And once again, we can see that that small signal current is dependent on this voltage VBE. And we can recognize that capital IC over VT is our slope of that small signal portion. And as before, that slope is a transconductance value that we'll call G sub M. And therefore, we can write that G sub M equals capital IC over the thermal voltage VT. You might recall that in the previous video, we developed an equation for the gain of our BJT circuit. We found that that gain, AVO, equals minus IC over VT times RC. Now since IC over VT equals GM, we can rewrite this as minus GM times RC. Now that we have our equations for our transconductance value, GM, and our gain value, AVO, let's go ahead and take a look at the development of the small signal models for the BJT amplifier circuit. One of the first things that we need to recognize in the BJT circuit is that it differs from the MOSFET in that we do have a current coming in through the base. We can write this as a mixed signal, little i capital B equals capital IB plus little IB. Relating this because we're in forward active mode to our values of alpha and beta, we recognize that capital IB equals capital IC over beta, and little IB would also be one over beta, times our small signal collector current, which is given as capital IC over VT times little VBE. As before, we can recognize that this first term is our DC base current, and this second term is our small signal base current term. Therefore, we're going to focus our attention on this term. We recognize that IC over VT is our transconductance value, GM. Therefore, let's rewrite this as little IB equals GM over beta times little VBE. We might recognize that this is really just an Ohm's law equation. We have a current, we have a voltage, and we have a conductance value. Rearranging this, we can write this as a resistance. Recognizing that resistance is voltage over current, let's rearrange this appropriately. We're going to call this resistance R pi, and we recognize that it should be little VBE over IB. And now we can see that little VBE over IB equals beta over GM. Doing a little math, we could also recognize that this is the thermal voltage VT over our DC base current, IB. And with that, we now have pretty much everything we need in order to develop our small signal models. This will be our input resistance for our circuit, as it was derived from the base current coming into the circuit. Therefore, for a hybrid pi model, starting at the base, we have a resistance R pi. Then, of course, we know already that our circuit is modeled by a voltage-controlled current source. And that goes from our collector to our emitter. Like before, that current source is given as the transconductance value GM times our voltage across that input resistor. In this case, we'll call that VPi. Like before, we do have an output resistance in our circuit. This is for a similar reason in the fact that we will have some sort of slope in our output in saturation mode, which again leads to an early voltage. Let's go ahead and draw our output resistance in this model. As before, this is related to our early voltage, so we may recognize that RO equals our early voltage V sub A divided by our collector current, capital I sub C. And that concludes our hybrid pi model development. We can also develop a similar model that we call the T model. As before, I'm going to just go ahead and draw this and we'll explain in a little bit. In this T model, you can see we once again used a dependent current source, dependent on that voltage V pi across that input resistance. We also have our output resistor. But one thing that's a little different is we have another resistance 
called little re. In this case, little re is because of the fact that we have some current coming through our base. We know that the relationship between the current in the base and the current in the emitter is a reflection of alpha. It shouldn't be too much of a surprise that we can write little re as being equal to alpha over gm. We can also write this as our thermal voltage vt over capital I sub e. And with that, we have developed our hybrid pi and t models for the BJT amplifier circuit. In our next video, we're going to talk about how to use these models in order to analyze a transistor amplifier circuit. We'll look at both the MOSFET and the BJT cases. Until then, that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.